I like Hutchinson the best, and I don't think Linda Brom is worth a top 10 pick. Thibodeau slipped, and I am going to grab Thibodeau. The Giants took clear Elam. Good for them. Kenyon Green is a guarantee in my mind. He would be such a dream pick right here. Um, Evan Neal is still on the board. <laughs> I'm not going to pick with that. That 44 pick could be tight end. That 44 pick could be a good linebacker, a good safety. We could drop back one pick and pick up a second rounder for New Orleans. We got options here. I love it when we say we got options here in that promo from that that draft I did that day because we're always going to have options. JD is really going to have the options. We don't have options. We're just going to sit there and we're going to watch. We're going to hope that he makes the right decisions and we're going to yell and scream at him and each other because we all believe that we're smarter than he is and we're smarter than anyone in the world and that our opinions are gold. And some of us end up being right about some of them, completely wrong about others. And that's just how it works, right? We are wrong about some things, and we're right about everything. Uh, some things, and we're wrong about some things. And if we were right about everything, we would be sitting in that position, making a lot of money, running the draft room. But uh, unfortunately for us, we're just a bunch of people on our couches and our chairs watching and screaming. But I don't mind that. It's not that unfortunate. I enjoy draft day. Um, sitting in the couch, watching, wondering who we're going to pick. It's not so bad. What's going on? Jennifer Slattery. She's here. She actually beat Dakota. It's amazing. What's up, Jess P? So we're going to do a mock draft. Why not? And look, things changed a little bit. From when I started doing them, and they always do, I was doing a couple right when the season ended, and I said it right from the start, situations change. As of right now, we have consecutive picks with 42 and 43, minus, of course, Elijah Moore on the roster. But we've got Lazard on the roster. Corey Davis has not been released yet. Um, it's expected, but it hasn't happened yet. Maybe they're waiting to make sure we get somebody else like OBJ. Maybe if it doesn't happen, maybe Corey Davis doesn't go anywhere. Maybe they're using Corey Davis um, as part of the trade to Green Bay. Because at $10 million, Corey Davis, as much as I know he, you know, he was injured and beat up here and had some drops and people aren't thrilled with him, it's not a lot of money for a wide receiver of his size and his ability when he's healthy. And it really isn't. He was on pace to get 1,000 yards. Um, in his first year with us, his production when he's healthy is actually pretty good. So the reality is, is that he might be appealing to a team like, uh, Green Bay, who has a couple of uh, young, young receivers in their room, bringing in a veteran guy like Corey Davis for $10 million is not a horrendous price tag. Especially when you're not when they're not spending a lot on the wide receiver room anyway. Um, you know, it's 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 a wealth of knowledge. It's a similar system, so he knows the system. Um, it it would make sense. So he might be part of a trade package, but but we still have him, and there's a reason we didn't we didn't cut him loose completely for a reason. We're waiting to see how things unfold. Um, a lot of people asking, what do I think is going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? What I think is, is first of all, I don't trust any of the Main Street media. So I don't know what Green Bay is asking, and I don't know what we're offering. I would be shocked, shocked, in disbelief, if Joe Douglas gave them the 13th pick in the draft. I don't think it's on the table. I don't even think we're close to that. I don't even know if Green Bay is even asking that at this point. I think this fight might over be over money. It might be over a second rounder versus a third rounder versus a fourth rounder. For all we know, JD wants to give him pick 143 or 112, whatever the hell it is, fourth round pick. And they're fighting for a second. And that's what, you know, we don't know because they're not talking. They're not telling us what they're far apart on. What we do know is very simple. That simple is that both teams need to trade to happen. Everybody wants to scream about who has leverage. Both teams need to trade to ha have happen. Now we have the first round of leverage. Because 
if the trade doesn't happen before the draft, that means we don't have to give up any picks for this year's draft. And Green Bay loses value because now they're talking about future draft picks for next year. So right now, if you're playing the game of poker, the Jets have the leverage. There's no question about it. The issue is that as soon as the draft is over, the leverage switches to Green Bay. And here's why. Because now that's over. That's a lost cause for them. But what is a good cause for them is, is that if they make the trade post June 1st, it helps them cap wise. Like it's a less of an instant cap hit. The cap is more like spread out over four years. So it actually ends up being better for Green Bay to wait till June. But they want the draft pick now, right? Whatever picks they want, they want it now. They want to start building around their young quarterback now. So you could see. Both teams need the deal to happen. It's not about one having leverage over the other, but it is about timing. So I have no problem that Joe Douglas goes right to the end with it to the draft because because I know the deal is going to end up happening. Even if, if that was pushed June first, that's inconvenient, not as much time, but he's a veteran quarterback. There's still a couple of months to get ready for the season. I'm, just, I'm not that stressed about it. And we'll have kept our picks for this year. And, and knowing that, that Aaron Rodgers may only play one year, I think that we need our picks. Wouldn't you love to just keep all these picks and surround Aaron Rodgers and give him the best chance in his the one year we know he's going to be on the team, the best chance to win a Super Bowl? And those are valuable picks. Those top, those three top 50 picks, those are guys who can contribute right away. A center, a tackle, a defensive tackle. I mean, we're talking about guys who can contribute to this team instantly. See a little other, a couple of other people in the chat. William Sprague, thank you, man. Still got a low grade fever um, in the morning. I take my Advil and Tylenol, and then I'm able to do this. Then in a few hours, I'll feel weak again, and I'll need to take Advil again. So I don't know how long this is going to last, but the fever doesn't go very high, so that's the good news. So, but I am, I am feeling better when I'm when I take the ibuprofen or the Tylenol. So at least it's working. Microfox. Draft weekend is really when the season starts. Yeah, well, you know, free agency, some people would argue, is when the season starts, you know. It's, it, last year was kind of exciting for us. I know it's been slower this year, but there's been some key moves. And, of course, we had the excitement of the Aaron Rodgers on the McAfee show. I mean, that was pretty intense, guys. I mean, when are, the, when are Jet fans, when are Jet fans, how many times in the past 40 years have we been involved in something that big? We're talking about one of the biggest YouTube shows where he'd normally have a hundred thousand, you know, fifty to a hundred thousand people watching his live stream. Not even that many, but like on a big event. And he jumped to over a million subscribers and had several hundred thousand people watching. And it was all centered around a player announcing whether or not he wanted to play for the Jets. When have we been the focus of something that big? The entire world was holding their breath of, in the NFL, the NFL world. And it was all focused around this player deciding if he wanted to retire, stay with the Packers, or go to another team, and we were the other team. And with hundreds of thousands of people listening, every bit of media listening, this man said, my intention is to play for the New York Jets. How did that feel? I mean... Gotta say, it feels like the season started at that moment, at the very least. Um, you're saying he may not have another choice to concede, but neither do they. So that that's the thing that 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 Mike or I agree we need the deal to happen, but it's not they don't have leverage over us. They need the deal to happen too. Go to overthecap.com and look what happens to them if Aaron Rodgers retires or if they have to keep him on their roster. He's not happy. They have to save face. He's the greatest player to ever play in their organization, arguably. Fair argument. Like, you could sit there and say, I don't agree. Bart Scott or whatever the hell. Vince Lombardi and Brett Favre. You can name a few other people's names. But nobody in the world, nobody would argue or debate the right to argue that Aaron Rodgers is the greatest player to ever play for the, for the Green Bay Packers. You can't make the argument. You can make the argument and pick three other names, 
But you cannot make the argument that he doesn't belong in the discussion of the argument. You can't tell somebody, oh, you don't have the right to argue Aaron Rodgers. You're out of your mind. Then you don't know about football. So you really think that this small town, that Green Bay, Wisconsin, Green Bay, Lambeau Field, you, this small culture, football's their life. You really think they want the greatest player to ever wear their uniform, arguably, certainly in the last generation of, of, of fans. To be pissed off and leave angry, insulting the organization because they won't let him just go and have his last year or two somewhere else in another in the other conference without trying to strip that team and, and strip away any chance he has to win. Give me a break. So don't tell me that that oh Joe Douglas has no choice. Joe Douglas has no choice, but so do, but neither do does Green Bay. Neither does Green Bay. That's not leverage. When both teams need the deal to happen, there's no leverage. And I just told you what the leverage was. If Green Bay wants the draft picks this year, they have to do it before the draft. That's leverage. The state, the moment the draft happens, if the deal didn't happen, goodbye. The picks are ours. Green Bay didn't get them. Then what are they going to do? Post June 1st. Okay. They make us wait till June 1st. Now what are they going to do? They've got to move on with their team. There's no leverage here. Don't invent things in your head. Don't make it up because you want to see things always against the Jets, always negative Jets. This is a double. This is both ways. This is both ways. And who's not going to blink? And so far, the JD I know is not going to blink. I see you saying something about being in cahoots. Please stop. Please stop. They're not playing us. Nobody's in cahoots. Let's stay in the real world. We got to be realistic. Okay? Like, like, he's not, no one's playing any games. No one's playing any games. Aaron Rodgers wants to play for the Jets. Just saying hi. Hey, Green Bean, what's up? I, I, I assume you are recording. Yeah, we just pause. Facebook smile. <laughs> uh, I got to check out the new layouts here. Um, Payo time told me that there's new layouts. So I've got to check that out um, with graphics and things like that. I don't know what it's going to mean. I, I, I saw it. The little notification went up, but I haven't clicked on it yet. Payo time. What's going on, my friend? So the Rams, you know, every mock draft trying to trade away their picks. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're definitely not giving up number one. I agree. I and I and I don't blame Green Bay for one getting wanting to get as much as possible and want, and playing and staring us in, in the face and you know it's it's fine. But at the end of the day, if they want draft picks for this year, if they want to start building up their team this year, then we have the leverage because. We have the leverage. Now, we don't have tons of leverage. We don't have all the leverage because understand the moment the draft happens, okay, <laughs> they, they, they stood tall and they they took, you know, they took the beating of not getting the picks, but now they have all the leverage. No one has – okay, I got to cor correct myself. No one will ever have all the leverage because both teams need the deal to happen, but they will have more leverage – the moment the draft is over and it didn't happen. I don't think they make it that far. I think there's a lot of pressure because like every GM in history, their job is always on the line. They're always being stared at. They're always being watched. There's always pressure to make the right move, right decisions. If they don't get this deal done before the draft and they don't get any picks and they've had like no free agency, the fan base is not going to be happy. Fan base is not going to be happy. And if a deal doesn't happen, the Jets, let's look at the, the worst horrible case scenario. Yeah, we don't have a quarterback. Our, our season's shot. What, what do we have, though? We still have a young, amazing core of players, tons of draft picks that keep coming in, right, because we're going to have new, new young stars that we pick because we have three top 50 picks, three picks in the top 50. So we have a, just this team that needs a quarterback. That will then have to go the season and then find a quarterback next year. What's their worst case scenario? 
They end up with nothing for Rodgers. They're humiliated. Aaron Rodgers scorches them in the media. The relationship is destroyed and has to be repaired. And people in Green Bay will get fired. I promise you, heads will roll. People will get fired. I don't know if JD gets fired if the deal doesn't happen. I don't know that. Because this roster is kind of something special. And we have never had a GM in two and a half years to be able to build a roster like this one. Just missed a quarterback. We just need a quarterback. So I wouldn't be so, so panicked. The deal is going to happen. It's probably going to happen before the draft because Green Bay has no no choice but to make it happen. And they're just going to wait us out. and do, they're, they're just doing whatever they can to get as much as they can. You can't really blame them for it. But anyway, let's get started with the mock draft. So we've been on for 15, 16 minutes. I think it's time to get started with the actual draft that I promised. We're going to do a mock right here. Let's share a screen. Now, look, I use... I use the um, PFN, and I hate the way they rank, the, the rankings, the rating system or whatever. It's complete garbage. It's total trash. I get it. But it's the best interface, in my opinion. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. In my opinion, it's the best interface. So I can't even use the other ones. They're like, it's ridiculous that no, nobody has created a, a usable interface. This is the only one with an interface I, I like, so I'm going to use it, and I'm going to take players where I want them. I'm not going to care so much about where they're ranked on this because the rankings are so bad. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, like PFN should be embarrassed How about how bad their rankings are. Like they can't – they can hire – there's so many – I mean, just hire Dom C. Even Tigo, not even like as an insult, but like Tigo. I mean, there are, there are people I know personally that can come in and re-rank their top 200 players and do so much better. Anyway, before we look at the trade offers, let's look and see who's on the board. In this version of the draft, Will Levis slipped. I don't think that's going to happen. But the good news for us when something like that happens is there might be willing to be more trade bait. Now, the worst case scenario is we get Pete. We take Pete. Some people say JD won't take Pete Stromkowski because Skoronsky doesn't fit our bill. I don't know what they're talking about. He's, to me, he's the closest thing to AVT since we drafted AVT. So I, I don't know what people are talking about. Um, I know he's got the short arms. You know, he's got the little the little short arms. But um, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I would be totally happy with Pete. But let's look at the trade offers. Let's see what's going on here. I don't like this because trading down to 31 sucks, but picking up pick 63 would not be bad, getting a first-rounder next year, which is really a second-rounder. I mean, it's Kansas City. Let's face it. It's going to be like 29, 30, 31, you know. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. The, the reason I don't like this pick, this pick, is we get nothing now with Baltimore. We get nothing. Pick 22 is not such a far trade back. We'd still get a decent player. Let's look at the next one. Ah. Now, this kind of thing I don't I, I like. Now, a lot of people say, oh, tell New England to go kick cans. I don't care. I will trade with New England. I will trade with New England. I don't care. And guess what? JD does not care either. You're going to tell me we're going to go one pick back? And gra grab 76, I'm taking that trade. Boom. And they took, by the way, they used that pick to take Najibba, the wide receiver. So, yay. And then look what we are left with. We're, we're getting pretty much the same offers that we were getting before, except we've added pick 76, a mid-third round pick. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. So now I would love to get the extra first-round pick next year, Jennifer Slattery. That's why you always trade back in the smallest increments possible because looky here, we're getting offered first-round picks all over again. It cost us nothing to trade back. New England happily got their wide receiver in Najigba. Okay, 
We got their 76 pick, and guess what? We're in great shape still. We're still getting offered picks. So, so that's the Vikings. Kansas City offers the same package, except this time they want pick 112. They're out of their mind. And here's Baltimore. Again, everybody wants a pick now. You see? They want to, they want it to be a little less sweet, the pot. Because they want to add a pick. I'm going to be realistic. I think out of these teams, Kansas City, Baltimore, Minnesota, Minnesota has the furthest they could fall. I know they had a good record last year, but I think they're trash. Um, and I say let's go back to 23 and get their first pick because they might literally be a top 20 pick next year. Very, very, very possible. So I'm going I'm to take this deal. Yeah, I know Kansas City's not that bad of a deal because we get that. But that first round pick next year is, is pick 30, 29. I mean, it's it's not as juicy as – and plus we're giving up 112 to move up to 63, so we're not gaining a pick. Although we did get 76. I don't want to go back all the way to 31, though. You know what I mean? I don't want to go back to 31. We go back to 23, we still got a good chance to get a tackle. Either way, we're going to get a tackle. Trust me, guys. So let's do this pick. Let's pick up a first rounder for next year. I think that Joe Douglas would do it if that was what he was offered. I honestly do. I don't think he would turn that down. Now, we have an opportunity to get another first round pick for next year, but now we're talking about trading way out there and not getting, you know, I don't think we could do any of these trades. Wouldn't shock me if he did. Wouldn't shock me. Can you imagine going into next year with three first rounders? <laughs> It'd be pretty awesome. But I, I think we should take a player. Look who's still on the board, guys. Peter Skoronsky. Is that going to happen in real life? I don't think so. I honestly don't. But what I do think would happen is I think Anton Harrison, Dewan Jones, or, Delna, or Darnell Wright, Wright would all be there. And I think all of those guys – could be guys that you take. All of those guys could be guys that you take with a 23rd pick. All those guys could be decent, really good you know, starting tackles and meet our need. Here's why I argue that Peter Skoronsky could slip. <clears throat> if the NFL sees him as a guard, if teams see him as more of a guard, he could slip. Players slip every year. I don't think that Pete Skaronsky is going to slip. I think Pete Skaronsky is going to be a top 10 pick because I think he's freaking AVT. So in my mind, the NFL is out of their mind. They're crazy if they let this kid slip. But I'm going to take him because he's there. And I can't help that PFN is stupid. And I think I see Tigo in the chat. And if I don't take Peter there, I think Tigo is going to reach through the computer screen and choke me out. Look at this. Baltimore, the Falcons are saying, go back two spots, really one spot, because we own the 43. So the only team that would get in front of us is Atlanta. And we could take our 143 and upgrade it to a 113. That is, that's not, that's 30 slots, guys. That's a full round to literally drop back one pick. We have to see who's on the board. And there's Kansas City. Right away, I could tell their pick is not as appealing. So I don't want to go back to 99. We have needs. Let's go look and see who they might want. They don't want Michael Mayer. They're not going to take a tight end, not with who they have. Darnell Wright, maybe they want Thule. They might want John Michael Schmitz. I got to be honest with you. I could, We could lose out on John Michael Schmitz. I'm okay with that. I really am. Because there's other guys. That will meet our need for center. We don't have to have our whole life depend on John Michael Schmitz, like people think. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that trade from Atlanta, and I'm going to upgrade that 143 to 113 because that's going to be a nice jump. That's going to be a nice jump. So let's do that. Right away, Cincinnati wants to go back to 60. I think we're going to take a player now. Oh, look at that. Green Bay says just come back two spots. Next year we'll give you a fourth for your two. I don't care about that. Okay. Let's pick. Let's pick a couple of guys. Oh, so look who Atlanta picked. They picked Darnell Wright, a tackle. 
We already addressed that need. It cost us nothing. It cost us nothing. So we just upgraded 143 and moved it up to 113 and moved up 30 slots, and it cost us nothing. So now we're going to take John Michael Schmitz because I don't see Kalaja on the board, my favorite defensive tackle. Fortunately, in this draft, he's gone, which is realistic. As Tigo would tell you, he'll be gone in the late first round. Right, Tigo? I just like throwing Tigo's name out there. I like talking about Tigo as if he's here right next to me. Like, look. Oh, my God. This is, this is Tigo. This is Tigo. Tigo's just standing. Hey, Tigo. Hi. He would, of course he's going to go in the late first round. In what world does, does he not get picked in the first round? He's the best defensive tackle out there, aside from Joe, Jalen. All right. Enough of that. We're gonna we are going to take we are going to take John Michael Schmidt. He's not gonna be there either, guys. But if it's not John Michael Schmidt at this point, just pretend it's 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 Weipler or the other guy, Tipman. The idea is when one of these two picks in the second round, we're gonna grab the best available center. In this case, in this imaginary world, we get John Michael Schmitz. Which is good because I want to sing the song. John Heingel, Jinger Heingel Schmidt. He dressed the whole day. I, I don't know. Okay. So now Green Bay comes in again and says, drop back a spot, guys, and I'll give you a fourth next year. Hard to imagine Green Bay is going to deal with us now. We haven't been, we haven't done anything with the with, – now they're going to want to deal. Um, let's see. We have to decide if we're going to do this. And I don't have my mute button, so I can't cough. One second. Sorry about that. Um, let's look at CEOs on the board. I don't think there's anyone they're going to take that I care about. So I'm going to do this trade just to get a free fourth round the next year. Yeah, they took a tight end, Luke Musgrave. So what do I care? Then Tampa comes in and says, drop back five spots and we'll give you pick 252. And to Tampa, I say, 252. 252. I do better with undrafted free agents. Okay. So now, here we go. We're at pick 45, guys. Let's look and see who we've gotten and how many picks we got. So we have our tackle. We have our center. We're about to meet a need right here at 45. And also, we're going to meet a need at 76. And believe it or not, 112 and 113 are going to be value picks. There are some good guys in that range, I promise you. Got some good defensive tackles back there, some good linebackers back there, some good safeties back there. A lot of decent players at 112 and 113 that we can grab. 76 will be a nice, juicy player, too. So what are we going to do? Let's look at this. Let's see what we got. We have, by the way, can you guys still see the screen? Okay, yes. Okay. This is, times like this, I want to grab an edge. I'm telling you, man. The, the, the draft is so deep in edge, and you see a guy like Thule sitting up here. And it's, it's very tempting. It's very tempting, because I don't know what's going to happen with Carl Lawson. It's very tempting to grab a kid like this, Thule. It, would, it wouldn't shock me if J.D. did it. We get a linebacker in safety like I was talking about. We can fill those other positions. I don't like Siaki Ika. J.L. Skinner, wasn't there an injury thing about him? Didn't something happen with him? I always pass over him because I thought there was bad news with J.L. Skinner. Didn't he get hurt? Didn't something happen with him? Yeah, isn't that funny that they have Michael Mayer still up there? It's so funny. They're so bad, PFN. Look at, like, Keon White. There's, like, really good edge rushers up there. These are real guys. I mean, these are real guys. It's hard not to grab one of these edges. It really is. Oh, my God. What do you think, Tigo? And Tan Antonio Johnson's a good safety, too. A lot of good players, but, man, I don't want to go back that far. I wouldn't mind. See, if I – I don't want to play the board because in real life I think Owen Popoe would not be a bad pick here. 
I really don't think he'd be a bad pick here because the truth is, is that the truth is that that I mean he might not be there when we pick next. Let me look. I really like Owen Papoli, man. I have like a huge. You desire to get him uh, 45 76. He might be there. I think in real life he wouldn't, right? Tigo, there's no way Papoe would make it to 76, right? Tigo, there's no way. Like, if we're being true to ourselves, there's no way Papoe goes that far, right? How in the world would he last that long? This kid is a speedster. Look at that RAS score, man. He is a coverage guy. He fits our defense perfectly. He's a perfect fit. He's exposed. He's so quick. He's so fast. Such a good player for us, man. He'd, he'd be such a great fit. You want to replace Quan Alexander? This is your guy. This is like a star version of, of Quan Alexander. Man, a linebacker could run a 4-4-7. But yeah, so you so 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 Tigo makes it worse for me. He says, Yeah, true. Owen's not gonna slip that far, but I don't know if JD takes a linebacker that early. But what does he take? That's the thing. What does he take? Does he take a safety that early? Like, what does he take that early then? When you think about it, he takes an edge. I'm telling you, he takes an edge. Because our our defense is predicated. On pressure, our defense went from 31st in the league to 5th in the league because of one thing. We took, we put pressure, pressure. That's all it is. And if we lose, if we lose, if we don't hold on to, uh, to what's our, what's his face? <laughs> I forgot his name. Carl Lawson. It's risky. You take Mayer here. I can't take a tight end, man. Well, I guess the value's there, but God, where do you play him? What are we gonna do? Ruckard's good. We're we gonna go, we're gonna cut Ruckard? No, we're not gonna cut Ruckard. We'd hold on to four tight ends. We cut Yaboa. Really, though, we're gonna develop Ruckard for another year. He's gonna have to sit for another year. He's going to sit for another year. Michael Mayer, though. There's no way he's there, though, in real life. It's not realistic. Ah. Uh, okay. Really? All right. It's such not a position of need for us. It really isn't. We're fine with Croft. We're fine with him. Ah. Uh. All right, I'm going to take Mayer because Green Bay always went, went big on tight ends. It was a big part of their offense. I took Michael Mayer. I don't feel great about it, but I just don't like how clogged up we're going to be in the room. But look, Jordan Battle's still there for safety. Papoe's gone. The New England got him. No, I'll, if this happened in real life, I'd never forgive Tigo. Every time Papoli made a play against us, I would never, I would never let Tigo forget it. We need a defensive tackle, don't we? Yeah, we need a defensive tackle. And Mozzie Smith is sitting right there. Let's see if someone's better. No. I don't know if you could pass up on Mozzie Smith right here. I think that the need for defensive tackle is bigger than the need for safety. Although Keanu Benton is there, too. The guy from Northwestern is still there. Yeah, I hear you. You're right. Sauce Gardner is the, is the perfect... Sauce Gardner is the perfect argument of why we would take Mayer there. He really is. It's the perfect argument. You just take the best value. You take the best player. Oh, yeah, look who's there from Northwestern. I know who you're talking about. 
Yeah. Edge of some we meet Alda Bawawa. Yeah, what the hell? Let's go Edge. Let's go Edge. We're going to go value now. We're going to go value. That guy's dominant. I want a de dominant defensive edge. Now we can look at our linebacker and safety. Still got a decent guy. Let's look. Okay, we're going to grab Keanu Benton. No-brainer, guys. He's not going to be there in real life. This rating is bullshit. He's impossible. I mean, we're talking about we're in the third round right now. So it's not impossible. But I think Benton could go in the second round. I think he'd go in the second round. So he's probably not going to be there. But it's, you know, we could say that about everyone. Right? Everybody moves up, then who moves back? So we can make that argument about anyone. I'm going to just take Benton here. We got our defensive tackle. Now we need a linebacker or a safety. We're going to take the best one. Let's see that. I don't know who likes Overshone. I know I don't. But I have a feeling there's a guy that's about to pop up. Hickman, Jamie Robinson, a lot of good safeties. I don't see any uh, linebackers of value here. I know there's one. See, there's Dorian Williams, but I think we can get him later. And I think in real life he's going to be available in the later rounds as well. I don't think he's one of those guys that's horrendously, like, far back here that's not really truly going to be available. Because, like I said, some of these guys have to be available. Every time you move a guy up, somebody gets pushed back. Um, I like Ronnie Hickman, but – Dom C likes Jamie Robinson, and who am I to argue with, with Dom C? So I'm going to take Jamie Robinson, good athlete, good safety, replacement for LaMarcus Joyner. And there's our free safety, Jamie Robinson. He might need some time to develop, but we got Adams, we got Clark, we got Whitehead still on the roster. So we're, we're okay. Um, and, and now here we're at 207, and I haven't gotten us a linebacker. I feel pretty bad about it, but, I mean, what can I tell you? Let's look and see if there's anyone here that slipped. Anthony Orgy. <laughs> oh, Jeff has would have fun with that name. Let's just go here. Let's look. Defense. Linebacker. I don't see anybody. Oh, Cam Jones. That's a nice name. Like Cam Jones. Sounds like the name of other former NFL players. Let's just look at their RAS scores and things like that. Look 22363. 4.61 RAS. 62230. 9.05 RAS. That looks like a coverage linebacker from Vanderbilt. I'll just grab him to. Wind this one down. So let's look at how we did. <laughs> E-Boogie wanted Ronnie Hickman. <laughs> Jamie's good too, man. JD, uh, Dom Seal will, will tell you why. That trade offer was like for a million crappy picks, man. I don't got time to sit there and take five picks in the 170s. Maybe you maybe you know the board that well to go, to go that deep. I can't sit there and look at guys that are ranked 170. Okay, so okay, let me blow this up so you guys can see. Look, it wasn't perfect, but you tell me this wouldn't be an amazing draft for us, okay? I mean, really. You might not be happy, E Boogie, with that pick. Oh, I I you know, you thought the offer was crazy. Yeah, I, at the end there, they that's what they do. Like these teams, like the LA Rams love to do that. We'll give you eight picks so we can move up 30 spots. Okay. So Peter Skoronsky, if if that happened, I know Tigo's happy. Okay, the great thing about Peter Skoronsky is if let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna paint a scenario for you. Let's say Mackay Beckton came back. Mackay Beckton comes, and he's great. Let's say he's done. He, what is it like his rookie year? He's more experienced. Let's just say the best case scenario happens. Miracle. Not only is Beckton healthy, but he's freaking good. He's dominating people. Right, and let's say Martin Dwayne Martin is really good and solid, and let's say Max Mitchell is back and he's solid, and we're really deep at tackle, and we could start Dwayne Brown and we could start Beckton, and Max Mitchell is there, 
Let's say all that happens. And let's say Lincoln Tomlinson sucks. Let's say he's just like he was last year. And he sucks. Because he sucked last year. What we could do is we could put Peter Skoronsky in. I don't care if we're paying Lincoln Tomlinson 15, 20. I don't care about his salary. He sucks. So it gives us the flexibility to say, well, we're just going to start Peter Skoronsky. Obviously, you got your paycheck, um, Lincoln, and you have no pride, no self-respect, and you're not really trying because you suck. So we're going to just sit you on the bench and good luck getting your next contract. I know you're rich and everything, but you're never getting another contract from anyone again because we're going to humiliate you and bench you for the rookie. That's what Peter Skaronsky gives us. Not only does he give us that, let's say Lincoln is not that bad. And let's say the Jets, like most teams, are too weak to do it. We pay him too much. It's too humiliating. Lincoln Tomlinson plays. Peter Skaronsky comes in at any position where there's an injury. Dwayne Brown goes down, no problem. Peter Skaronsky. It's not Max Mitchell. A guard, AVT gets hurt again, no problem. Lincoln gets hurt again, no problem. Our center gets hurt again. Tell me if I'm wrong here, Tigo. I think Skaronsky could come in and play center if he had to. The point is, the point is, Peter Skaronsky is versatile and would give us incredible depth on our offensive line. Our offensive line would be very strong. The only, especially when you look at John Michael Schmitz sitting there at 43. Like if we ended up with John Michael Schmitz or Lou Weipler or, or Tipman, then we got a strong center. Maybe we signed the veteran Jones. We're strong and deep at center. We're strong and deep at tackle because Peter makes us strong at, at, at depth for both tackle and guard. And then next year we find a way to get Lakin off the team or whatever, and we get Peter Skaronsky in there as a starter. You never know. Beckton might go off this year and then want $23, $24 million a year. We can't afford it. We just – Peter Skoronsky's the replacement. I mean, you just don't know. <clears throat> I can't see that being the case because Dwayne's going to be gone. So then we're going to have a big problem at tackle next year. I think we have to find a way to – I think there's a way we can keep Beckton. I think we could uh, tag him or something. So, So we'll figure it out. So anyway, we get John Michael Schmitz at center. So we get two guys. We bulk up our offensive line. Now our offensive line is a strength. It's deep. It's full of talent, young talent. It's exciting. Um, perfect situation for an Aaron Rodgers. Um, Michael Mayer comes in, and I think he's the kind of guy I think that makes a, uh, an impact. That's not going to be Jeremy Ruckert. Michael Mayer is not going to be there at 45, guys. But if somehow he was, we have another weapon. Because I like him better than any tight end on the team right away. I want to give him reps. And if he's not ready, if he's a rookie and he needs more time to develop, that's okay. We're not dependent on him to be 100% ready and not a rookie right off the bat. But, uh, yeah, man, it was it was a bold move taking him. Wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Tigo. Um, and then we got Ada Tom, Tomwa Adabawar. Now, here's – I know it's going to be a, a pain in the neck saying his name. We'll probably just call him Addy, you know, or double Addy. But here's a guy who was at the Senior Bowl running over people. I mean, this guy was running over other prospects that want to get drafted in the draft of the Senior Bowl, like other top seniors. Uh, and this guy was bulldozing them. I'd be excited about an edge like this. Like, wow. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Keanu Benton, for those of you who don't know, is going to be a fantastic defensive tackle. He is one of the secrets of the draft. Um, I don't know if he's really going to truly last this long, but he's a, a, he's a big guy. 315-64, but he has an 8.65 rest. He's a good athlete. He's quick. He's fast. He could do both. He could stop the run. He could rush the passer. I mean, this guy was uh, um, this guy was a nose tackle, right? So he, he, until the senior bowl, he didn't even get that many opportunities. He was playing over center. So we know he could stop the run. We know he could take up a ton of space. 
But what's nice about him is when he went to the senior ball, he was showing quickness and, and the ability to get through guys and put pressure and raise, you know, create havoc in the backfield. So now you get that guy, Addy Addy. That's what I'm calling him. Addy Addy. You get Addy Addy there with freaking Bryce Huff and with, uh, I don't know if Carl Lawson's coming back, but we got JJ and JFM, and we have all these good guys and Quinn and Williams on the line. And now you got Benton coming in also with Quinn and Williams, fast, athletic, creating havoc in the backfield. Guys, we're going to terrorize quarterbacks. Terrorize. We are going to terrorize people. And as uh, Tigo was saying, Addy Addy, by the way, is versatile. He's like a JFM kind of guy. You can move him, and Clemens, you can play him in the middle if you have to. You can move him inside. You can line him up outside, but have him stunt to the inside, like we were doing with Huff and JFM. You could do all those things with him. Then at 113, I mean, we already made the team so much better. I mean, the, the defensive line would be insane if we added these two guys. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then you got Jamie Robinson, so there's your free safety. You want a free safety, you got a free safety, right? Causes pass deflections, fumbles, interceptions. You know, you, you, you just got your safety. He's your guy. I don't know if he's a starter day one. He might need some time to develop. But we're not as bad off in the position as we think. I mean, we're not all stars. We're not all pro at safety. But they like Adams a lot. And Clark is a solid player. And we still have Whitehead on the roster. And then we get this guy I don't even know. His name's Anthony Orgy. But I know that the Jet fans would have a lot of fun with the name. It's like, come on, let's get Orgy in. Come on, let's give Orgy a shot. <laughs> What's wrong with Orgy? <laughs> it would be more exciting game if we had Orgy in. <laughs> Orgy in the house. <laughs> Orgy at MetLife. I can go all day. Anyway, there you have it. There's our draft. There's our draft. You could see that there's a lot of opportunity for really good value. Also, I thought that we got... Didn't we get a first-round pick? Wait a second. Oh, yeah. We also got, on top of all this talent, not only did we add all that offensive line power, a star tight end, another edge, a, a defensive tackle that's an athletic freak, another safety into the mix, we added a first-round pick in Minnesota, from Minnesota. So now we go into next year with two first-rounders, and... Maybe as a contingency, if, if Rodgers comes back a second year, we can give Green Bay their fourth-round pick. We can give it back to him. We can say, here's that fourth-round pick you traded with us. Thanks for Rodgers. We appreciate it. Anyway, let me go into here. Stop share so you can see my lovely face again. That is our Saturday morning mock draft. For those of you who are watching this, not live, but playback, feel free to... Tell me how dumb and crazy and nuts I am in the comments. Argue with me and tell me all the things I did wrong. Or maybe you'll tell me you're a genius. You should be the GM of the New York Jets. Now let me tell you, realistically, I wish it was this easy. I wish that these trade offers came piling in like that. And I wish that all those players would drop and be available at those times. But the reality is none of that's really going to happen. But it was still fun to do that. And I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of the players you saw in this draft end up on our team. <clears throat> I don't think it's impossible. What's up, Mess? What's going on? Ah, that's right. He can cover in the slot. Jammy can cover up the slot. He can jam up the defense. Joe Gron is in here. Tony Alexio is in here. He thinks we should just, you know, find as many guys as we can that remind him of his favorite quarterback. You know, QB4. What's his name? Strevler? <laughs> we just need trade partners. 
We just need to – because what I don't think is I don't think it's going to be – I don't think J.D. is going to have the same type of draft. I think it's going to be more like the Denzel draft. It's going to be the trading back draft. I don't think it's going to be last year the trading up draft. I don't expect that, that at least. I expect them to trade back and get more picks, not less. Um, but he won't trade back if the right person's there. Like – if Jalen Carter is not going to slip, I mean, I don't know why I keep like why we even entertain it. But if Jalen Carter was there, we're not passing on him. We're suspicious. We're like, no way can twelve teams ahead of us be that stupid. But we're not passing on him. Um, Jalen Carter is legitimately a top three pick. I mean, it's only the quarterback situation that even suggests he can go back to five, six, seven. And then what happens is people have these theories that these teams have other needs, but there's always like other, there's other JD type GMs, GMs that don't care about their need when they see a guy like Jalen Carter. I mean, it's a franchise kind of player, man. It's a guy that like helps transform a franchise. It's a superstar. You just don't pass on guys like that. So, you know, we'd have to take them. And I'm sure there's a tackle. I don't know which one it is. I'm sure there's a tackle, whether it's Pete, whether it's Paris, whether it's Broderick. I'm sure there's a tackle that J.D. loves that he might not be willing to trade back from. We don't even know that he wants a tackle. We don't even know. I don't think he's taking a wide receiver. I don't think he is. It's too weak of a draft. Right? That's what they sell me. It wouldn't shock. I wouldn't be impossible. I wouldn't say there's no way that just happened. I wouldn't. I'd say, holy cow, he took a wide receiver. He must really love that guy. But, man, he would really have to love a wide receiver. Like, it, it wouldn't have anything to do with the strength of the class. It would have to be there's one wide receiver in this draft that J.D. loves. I don't even know if that's true. I'm saying if there was one, let's say that he was in love with, that he thought was going to be another Garrett Wilson, another superstar guy, even though we don't see it, then I could see him taking him. Because look at it this way. If someone guaranteed you, hey, this wide receiver right here, this guy, whoever his name is, Hyatt, Addison, Najigma, this guy's the next Garrett Wilson. He's going to win rookie of the year. If you knew that in advance, you'd take him. So that what that means is if Joe Douglas felt it and believed it with all his heart, <laughs> he could shock us and take him. But uh, I, I don't see him doing it over a tackle. He's an offensive line guy. They believe in the trenches. That, you know, they have weapons already. I think they need to make sure that they're set on line. And if they don't get a, a, a star tackle, then – I mean, they might not be able to keep Makai long term. We can't pay everybody. We might need that next pancake guy, the next big, big guy, superstar guy that we can own the rights to for the next four to five years. We might need that guy. That's what he might be thinking. So I don't think we have, I don't know that we have a choice. I mean, it's like, it seems the most obvious this year that tackle's got to be the pick. And it's not that we don't have tackles on the team. We do. It's just that there's so many question marks. What caused Max Mitchell's blood clots? Do we know that it's not going to be a problem again? Do, do, like, did they say what the cause was? Is it a problem that's going to be part of his life? Is it a freak thing that they don't have to worry about ever happening again and he's fine? Is Beckton going to be look great, come into shape, come into camp, look great, and then all of a sudden a plague happens and he's on the ground and they come out with the freaking stretcher? And then it's announced that he's retiring because his knee just freaking can't do it? I mean, there's so many question marks. Dwayne Brown, I mean, is he doing the surgery? Like, he couldn't lift his arm up. He's 40. Is he going to be okay? You draft a guy like Broderick Jones, if he's there, then at least you have one of those positions. 
you have the question answered, right? You got a guy who doesn't have an injury history. He's in there. He's your tackle. If Becton comes back, you got two freaking monsters. If Becton gets hurt again or if something's weird, you have a veteran in Dwayne Brown. And now all of a sudden, these are just all options. One of the threes got to work out to play opposite Broderick Jones. Not without it, then it's two out of three. If we wait to the second, third round and get a guy like Fle- uh, Fleeland or Bleese, whatever his name is, or Cody Mock, I mean, those are good guys, but I don't know if they're year one guys. You know, those are just th- like throwing darts. They're good players. They might end up being good tackles. They might end up not. Whereas Broderick Jones is like, it's like another Becton. Well, Juwan Jones is more the the one that's like Becton. He's the six foot eight, three hundred eighty pound monster, which is why I think we're going to avoid it because <laughs> I don't think we're going to do that again. I don't think we're taking another giant, giant man because then all if they get hurt, the fans are going to be less like marching down uh, with pitchforks and fire <laughs> if we do that again. But uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's gonna be. It's going to be a uh, an interesting draft this year. I'll tell you that. It's been interesting every year. That's one of the great things about Joe Douglas. I've always been excited about the draft, but as a Jet fan, I've always felt kind of like a sweet and sour feeling. Like it's time for us to suck. It's time for us to make stupid moves. It's time for us to remind ourselves why we suck. That's what the draft always represented. It always represented, for the most part, dumb picks, bad picks, uh, lack of aggressiveness, picks where we could have traded down, picks where we could have traded up. Um, and now all of a sudden you, you feel exciting about, uh, excited about the draft. You have a guy who knows how to, you know, with a real scouting department, who knows how to evaluate talent and bring in real guys. I mean, last year's draft was insane. Insane. It was such a, it was the best draft, man, of my life. I can't imagine many teams can have that many drafts that you can compare to the draft we had last year. I mean, it was excitement. Excitement, excitement. It was like incredible. It was just like that first night was just magic. And then to start day two off with the trade up for Brees Hall. Oh. And then to end that day with Jeremy Rucker. It was just out of control. What an amazing day that was. What an amazing draft it was. Loved it. Loved it. Now all of a sudden we get to be excited about the draft. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with Green Bay, but as of, as of right now, day one, we have pick 13. So you know that first night's going to be fun because we might trade back. We might trade up. I don't think we're trading up because there's no one to trade up for. But I think it's obviously 99% more likely we trade back than up or stand still. But if we go on that podium at pick 13 – you know there's going to be a great player left. You know it's going to be there. There's going to be. Is it going to be our next stud tackle? Is it going to be maybe he takes Schmitz there? Maybe, you know, we can't go by the PFN board. Maybe he takes his center and says, no, we're going to have a superstar center. I'll get a tackle in round two or three, you know, in round two with one of the two picks, but we're getting the center. Then when day two comes, don't be surprised if we trade back one of those two picks. <clears throat> Get our third round pick back. We might do it. That's what's so exciting. What is this? VC man has a question. VC man. Let's put your question up there. Dumb question. Do first and second rounders automatically start their rookie year? Is that a given? How you feel feeling, by the way? My house has been a bacteria hellhole. Strep now flu going around. 
Sorry to hear that, man. Um, I wake up with a fever every morning, and then I'm fine with Tylenol and Advil, and I it lasts longer every day. So it's to the point where I'll probably not need to take more until about 7 o'clock tonight, Western time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Then I'll take some, and I try to, when I go to bed, if I'm feeling okay, I try not to take more, another dose, because I want to see if I can wake up the next morning okay. And then I wake up with a low-grade fever. And because of that, I keep coughing, because when I'm sick, I cough a lot. So I had the COVID relapse. Sucks. I was healthy for three days. I had COVID in North Carolina, ruined my trip. I salvaged the last two days, three days of the trip because I tested negative twice. I felt fine. And then I had that stu- I had this thing called a relapse that happens. It's like it's three to four percent of people who take that provoc the drug or whatever have a relapse. And it happened to me. So I was sick again on Monday. The fever really didn't start kicking in until Wednesday. So I thought, oh, it's just going to be a cold for a few days. And then all of a sudden I had a fever. And um, I feel weak right now, but I'm okay. Like, I feel like it's a nice sunny day. I might be able to get some sun, go for like a two-block walk just to get some sun on my face. And um, then go sit down and rest. But the problem is I can't go back to work until the stupid fever goes away. Every time, if I wake up with a fever, I can't go to work. And it's getting really bad because we had the week off and then we had, I missed all of last week. And now I'm going to start this next week and miss days, maybe. Um, So I'm not happy. It's not a good thing. But I'm lucky because I'm not in the hospital. I don't have 103. You know, my fever hits 100. Which is high for me, but still, it's not 103. It's not 102. It's It's not like the kind of fever where you start calling doctors and saying, do I need to go to the hospital? Sorry you got strip, though. That sucks. Strip. I hate strip. But it is that type of year. It's that time of year. There's a lot of weather change and all that stuff. And this is the time of year, man. Spring where everybody's getting crap. So, Was that your first COVID experience? Yes, it was. Hopefully you are immune from it for another 6 to 12 months. Schools want you to be fever-free for 24 hours. My kid is hitting 103+. plus. Wow. Sorry to hear that. Hope he's okay. What's up, Dom? Just made a mockery of you, man. Here, let me share it again. I'll show you the results. Let's show Let's show Dom the, uh, let's show Dom the draft. He's going to be shocked by it. So check it out, Dom. This is what I did. I took Peter with the first pick after trading down. I took John Michael Schmitz because he was there. I know that realistically he's not going to be there, Dom. So, but imagine for some magic, imagine the, the imagine the, the for some reason PFN is right. <laughs> this is what I did. Michael Mayer was still there at 45, so we grabbed him, Dom. I know it makes no sense, but we did it anyway, Dom. We took the kid from Northwestern, Dom. I had to. After the you sent me the video of him. And I, I couldn't I could not do it. And then Keanu Benton, Dom. Played he played nose tackle. He played over center in Wisconsin. He's a good run stopper, but when he got the opportunity at the senior bowl, he showed he could be a, a disruptor in the uh, in the backfield. Then I went for this kid ja- ja- Jamie Robinson, Dom. I figure he could be a future free safety. He could also help fill in, be a backup to Michael Carter in the slot. I knew all that by myself. That had nothing to do with Tigo, Dom. Dom, I then took a guy named Anthony Orgy. <coughs> the reason I took him is because it would be fun to have that name on our team. Orgy in the Meadowlands. Orgy at MetLife. Green Bay, uh, Green Bean went to MetLife to watch Orgy. Are people laughing? Because I think this is funny stuff. Okay. <laughs> Matt O'Leary ran out and got season tickets so he could watch Orgy. <laughs> I 
can't stop coughing. Dom, on top of all that, Dom, I got us a 2024 first round pick from Minnesota. And I got us the, the Green Bay's fourth round pick from 2024. And that's the pick we're going to give him back as a contingency for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and that's it, Dom. That's what I did. So I don't think those players are going to be available. And I think it would be a dream if that draft actually happened. It really would be a dream. It would be a dream. It would be amazing if that happened. If we added those guys, it would be ridiculous. It'd be like last year. So it's fun. Anyway, happy Saturday, guys. I'm going to go. You can see I'm, the cold is kicking in. I'm coughing like a lunatic, so I got to stop. But uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate y'all being here. I say y'all now because I was in North Carolina for a bit. So I'm fixing to do things now. Anyway, thanks for joining. That was the New York Jets full round 2023 draft. I'll be back to do it again. Don't you worry. Here's a memory from last year's draft. Don't not be tipping up. And here it comes. It's about to come in. Oh, my God. They didn't. They took Sauce Gardner. Oh, my God. They don't want an edge. Maybe he likes Jermaine Johnson at 10. Then we're not going to get a wide receiver. Garrett Wilson, wide receiver. Oh, my God. No edge. The Jets traded up. The Jets traded up. Are we taking JJ? Are we taking JJ? Because I know Braden is in New Zealand saying, we should get Lily, Mike. He's definitely saying that. JJ! We got Johnson! We got Johnson at 26! We got Johnson at 26! This is great! <laughs> yes! They took Roger McCreary. They didn't take Dean. We traded up. We can get the Kobe Dean. We can get the Kobe Dean. It really is. They took Brees Hall. They took Brees Hall. Wow, I mean, look, I love Brees Hall. I... But there's also Jeremy Ruckert, who I think is the best tight end in the class, personally. They took Jeremy Ruckert! They took Jeremy Ruckert! Yes! We got a Jeremy! We got a Jeremy! Oh, and the Jets pick, and it's Max Mitchell. Offensive tackle! We needed that. That's... Uh, wow. We took Michael Clemens. I never heard of him. A defensive edge.